think first you can begin by doing a basic Google search. You know, is is this subject been covered? How has it been covered? What perspective will you take on your particular subject? That subject can be a historical documentary, it could be an event-based documentary, it could be a simple uh, portrait study uh, of a character, but you should begin with a little bit of just quick uh, research that you can conduct on your own. The difference between a paper and a documentary is a documentary is made up of uh, motion picture and sound and you have to accumulate sort of two other levels, a three-dimensional um, uh, picture uh, of what you're documenting, not simply uh, sitting in a room and, and writing a paper. One thing as a documentary filmmaker is to write down all of your questions. Um, especially if you're going to conduct an interview. Also, set and setting are very important when um, shooting somebody. Where they're being shot, how you're framing them, what the environment is like is just as important as uh, what the subject is going to say to you because it's communicating visual information. You want to uh, assemble what's called a shot list, which is literally a list of all the different various vantage points and types of images that you want to accumulate uh, during the time uh, that you're out on your film shoot. It's really about time management. You have very little time to capture those images that you're going to need at a later date, which is called the editing process, to assemble together. And if you don't get it while you're there, you can't magically conjure up these images at your desk. You have to capture them while you're there. And it might take you quite a, a bit of effort to, I don't know, drive to Cleveland for a specific interview. And if you haven't thought um, about what you want to capture while you're in Cleveland, it might be a big hassle to assemble a crew and to get back to that place where you need to uh, have those images that you're ready. So editing is really the stage in which a documentary film is written. Everything that you've had on uh, your shot list or in your written description of your project has no life until it's in the camera and edited for somebody to watch. So it's the place really where the film comes to life. I think of audience as both a director and an editor of documentary films from the very beginning. Who is this intended uh, for? Uh, is it for school children? Is it for uh, adults of a certain age? Is it for other college students? Is it for historians, uh, research scientists? You know, who, who is your audience? Because that's going to determine the kind of language that you use, how much information you need to contain within the film, uh, expositional information to set up your subject for a viewer. So I think it's very important to think about who the audience is for your work. I think having a project that's outside uh, the resources that are available to you during the time that you're here as a, as a student, that could be money, that could be time. The quarter system goes by very fast, the year goes by very fast, and until you have uh, shot, let's say, a short documentary on a very limited subject, I don't think you really know the amount of effort and work it goes into uh, to create even one minute of a documentary. So slowly but surely I think it's better to sort of build up uh, the time of story that you want to uh, tell versus trying to shoot for the moon f first. I think if you shoot for the moon in the film you end up shooting yourself in the foot. Plan, plan, plan. Uh, don't just show up and think that you're going to point and shoot and something magical is going to happen in front of your camera. Uh, a subject is going to magically open up and tell you the most personal details of their lives or give you an accurate account uh, of an event that they've witnessed. You have to put in the research before you even press record on your video camera. I think you have to be present as a documentary filmmaker to have your subject 
open up to you and respond to you. You have to be there for them, both intellectually on one hand, monitoring everything that they're saying, but also emotionally available, responding to what they're saying. If they are beginning to reveal something to you, you need to respond in some way that you are hearing them and you're uh, feeling what they're uh, offering to you.